Good morning and welcome to part four of our study through the book of Job from a seer's perspective. We're going to start today looking at chapter five. There's some very interesting things in chapter five that stand as reminders for us, really, um, not just as seers, but for Christians. It's a call to expectation, expectation of the miraculous, expectation that God can do the unexpected the unimaginable. So let's have a look. First of all, it starts with, call now, is there anyone who will answer you? And to which of the holy ones will you turn? This is really a call out to the seer um, to to think, who, who are you calling out to? Which, which of the holy ones uh, can actually save you? Because the seer is going to be able to perceive and see so much of the spiritual realms that um, it's almost like walking through a shopping mall but it's full of angels and full of spiritual beings and for the seer a, a question i'm often asked is with how much you can see the spiritual realm is there a danger kind of your focus is going to turn away from god and it's going to be placed on the angels is going to be placed on the spiritual beings. And we see in the New Testament that actually the new uh, Christian church fell into this danger, that they fell into focus on the angelic. And we've got two letters that address this um, in the New Testament, and they say, well, actually, Jesus Christ is the supremacy. So this is a call and a reminder to the seer. It's quite sobering to remember our focus is always Jesus Christ. If, if any teaching comes and puts anything else above Jesus Christ in the seer realm, in the spiritual realms, then we've got a question, what's, what's going on here? Where is the focus? The focus is, has always got to be on the glorification of God. The, um, we are the image of God, so anything that uh, encourages us to grow in in our life in the nature of god it always has to point towards jesus christ as our the perfect image the perfect representation the, the perfection he is what we are attaining to so we are attaining to be just like jesus christ the bible even says you know imitate paul as he imitates jesus christ or strive for perfection and show perfect love as the Father in heaven is perfect. So it's always pointing toward, towards God. And even the fruits, of the fruits of the Holy Spirit, they are pointing back towards the Spirit of God. You know, show in yourself the fruits of the Spirit. Work in yourself. The Train the, the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's always pointing back to God. So let's have a look at what the Bible says. Um, so let's skip now to verse 8 in Job 5. And it says, as for me, I would seek God. So <laughs> the, here it is again. Let's, let's, let's take the focus away from what you perceive, what you see. It's all wonderful. It's all amazing. But actually, let's, let's set our eyes back to God. Because this is where the source comes from. It is God. And so we go on and we see why. And it's because in verse 9, God does great and unsearchable things, wonders without number. He gives rain on the earth and sends water on the fields. So this, this is natural miracles, natural wonders. So that he sets on high those are, who are lowly and those who mourn are lifted to safety. And it goes on, really. So these are natural wonders, things which we think, wow, how, how can someone design the weather systems over the whole planet, watch over them, govern them, and set into motion all of the underlying rules, the laws of physics that actually make that happen? And it was designed and thought up by God. And it's a miracle. Um, it's a miracle because only somebody who has supreme intelligence, supreme knowledge, and supreme power could create all that we see from nothing. So more than that, he is able to do what we think is unnatural for someone who is in a low position to raise them up to be a ruler over the people. And this does happen sometimes um, in the Bible. 
we see the example of David. David was raised up from a shepherd boy. Uh, he was on the outskirts. He was in the fields looking after the sheep. He was certainly not one of the favored uh, children. And God chose him to be king. And so he frustrates the plotting of, of the shrewd. And it's it's interesting. So we've got this comparison of the natural stuff and the schemes of people being almost turned upside down by God's wisdom and God's power. And then as we push on, it says even he saves from the sword of their mouth and the poor from the hand of the mighty. So he is basically delivering people in war. He is delivering people from hunger. And his, his heart is always turns towards the poor, towards the needy. So this is our God, and I'm just going to skip through now to Job 5, verse 17. This is really key for us, and this is another supernatural wonder. It says, Behold, how happy are you who God reproves. So do not despise the discipline of the Almighty. And it goes on to say, For he inflicts pain, and gives relief. He wounds and his hands heal. Now this is a very strange thing to think that actually there is pain that can be caused and then relief and there is, are wounds that happen and then healing. And what this is actually talking about is it's a dynamic thing. So first of all, from a serious perspective, when we see suffering and pain, it's that overall, God has allowed that to happen, but he also, in his grace, steps into this world to bring salvation and relief. Now, he doesn't stop all pain, and he doesn't stop all suffering, and he doesn't stop all evil, because to do that, he would have to bring the end of days to make everything perfect. And he's holding off on that day because he wants as many people to come to know him as possible. It's, it's a strange tension that God is holding, and we don't really understand it. Um, but the other side of this is actually that God will, it's, it's almost like if you want to grow, there is a stretching. So this pain, it's like a growth pain. If you want to grow spiritually, he's going to have to refine our heart. He's going to have to refine our mind our soul, everything's going to have to be refined. And it's what Jesus talks about, which is denying the self. We're going to have to go through that self-denial. It's almost like a self-crucifixion of what we know, who we are, our desires, so that we can realign into God's desires, who God is. And then another level of this is realigning our understanding of the spiritual realm. And as we go through the journey of understanding the mystery of God, sometimes it can really be painful. It can really hurt our minds and think, we can think, I've just seen this experience, I've just perceived this thing in the spiritual realm or received this, this lesson, this spiritual lesson, but it doesn't really fit with what I know, um, what I've been taught, and we're gonna need to search through the Bible, we're gonna need to search through prayer, always anchor it back in the Bible, and allow God to actually expand our spirit, expand our understanding into who he is. Because the goal is to really propel us into the perfection of Jesus Christ. It is to propel us into our destiny, which is the glorified manifestation of the sons of God and the daughters of God. We are the children of God. And all of creation is waiting for us to be revealed in the glory that God has destined us for. And so every day, he is progressing us towards that destiny. And that's going to be a painful growth. So he inflicts the painful growth, but then he gives relief. When we actually flourish out of that growth, it's almost like that relief where we reach that destination, that, that small step of growth. We reach that destination. We've grown, we've changed, and actually our perception is able to be more clear of the spiritual realm. And then it goes on. It says, from six troubles, he will deliver you. Even in seven, evil will not touch you. 
And this talks about his perfect deliverance. And this is toward this is our goal. This is our hope that the Bible speaks of that our hope is in Jesus Christ in the resurrection that we will be delivered whether or not God delivers us now or he delivers us at the resurrection it doesn't mean we stop worshiping him if he does not deliver us now but we will worship him nonetheless and we will follow him just as Daniel said in the book of Daniel that if God saved him or if God did not save him he would still worship God and that's our our hope really and our anchor is that our eternal destiny is that salvation that eternal life that Jesus Christ promised and then it goes on talks about famine he redeems people from death and in war from the power of the sword and these are the miraculous things that God will do he will speak to his prophets today about coming famines coming wars and it's down to the church to listen and discern and weigh up those words um most of the prophets that he speaks through won't be headline prophets they will be small names people who are not known and they will carry the message from god they will give it to their local church and the local church will need to respond in prayer and through this god will deliver from famine I saw an example of this uh, at the beginning of lockdown where I shared a, a word that there would be famines um, coming and some people did respond in prayer. And then I heard news that actually someone had responded with connections in India, that the church there was in the middle of a famine that had just started. And so they were able to mobilize in response. and serve that church serve the local community and deliver that community from extreme circumstances and so this is the dynamic of the kingdom it starts with that prophetic voice or that seeing voice seeing the spiritual realm hearing what is coming sharing it with the church the church responding and meeting needs and this is how the body of christ or the church actually integrates with the seer gifting or it is one way anyway um and it talks it talks about god hiding us from the scourge etc etc um and there's one that i want to be skipping towards um yeah so it talks about be having a covenant with the stones of the field and living beasts in the field will be at peace with us and this is a very strange thing to think about, that we might have a covenant with the stones in the fields and the animals being at peace with us. And I just want to explain this a little bit. It talks about you will know that your tent is secure, for you will visit your abode and know and fear no loss. And what this is talking about really is the ultimate reality of the kingdom of God is that the the stones of the field what are they well Jesus says that if the people did not cry out in praise to God that the stones the bricks would cry out in praise there is something in creation that it, it's a life that God has spoken into it and it speaks out it speaks out in praise to God it speaks out and testifies to heaven about what has happened on earth. And so we see this, the first example is the blood of Abel spilled on the land and it's in a field and his blood cries out from the ground and reaches heaven. We see it in um, Sodom and Gomorrah that the cry of the earth had reached heaven. And we see in the book of Revelation as well, we see pictures of this, of prayers reaching heaven and things being poured out from heaven onto the earth. So what does this actually mean? A covenant with the stones of the field and the beasts of the field being at peace with us. Well, it talks about the creation responding to us in a, an agreement. So it's, it's creation responding in a way that God has designed it to respond to the people of his kingdom. God said to Adam and Eve, go and subdue the earth 
go go multiply and subdue the earth and the animals will be subject to you and it's talking about actually this harmonious relationship with the world around us harmonious relationship with animals now for the seer we can see how the spiritual realm is working within the natural realm how the spiritual realm is working within the things around us and we we can actually see what has happened in the past what will happen in the future and what is happening currently whether this is seen as sort of like colors or feelings or you actually see words coming out of things it depends on on how the seer gift is working with you but we can basically see what the ground is saying what the ground is testifying about one example of this is when I was driving along a motorway and I could hear the ground crying out. It was crying out a certain thing about it. And when I checked this in with some people in the local area and the news reports of the local area, it confirmed what I was hearing from the ground. And so we were able to pray and intercede for peace and for, for God's kingdom to come to that ground and or that area of land. And we saw a shift there. We saw God shift something in that situation and it moved towards a good outcome. So basically, it's talking about the the natural surroundings, everything that God has made in the physical realm coming into alignment with us for the kingdom of God, to work with us to bring the will of the Father into its situation. So as a seer, we are going to be able to hear the cry of the land, to hear and see what has happened in physical locations. We will cover a lot more about this and how this works in deeper mentoring sessions. If you're interested about that, um, please leave a comment below or uh, get in touch and I'll be running some mentoring sessions through my Patreon. That's uh, patreon.com forward slash Christian Seer. I'd love to hear uh, from you uh, if you're interested in more mentoring. And we're just going to go on and cover the, the final bit for today, which is the beasts of the field will be at peace with you. Now, this is talking about, yes, animals being at peace with us. As it's said in, in the prophets that the, the child will lay down next to the lion and the lamb and and the child put his hand in the adder's nest and not be injured and and it's very strange imagery but it talks about the peace of the kingdom of god it talks about this situation that god is going to set up in perfection that there is no evil but more than that as well it talks about now now we have the holy spirit in us we are able to see the world through God's eyes, to see the spiritual, the supernatural through this gifting of, of the seer gifting in the Holy Spirit. And the beasts, we are able to perceive and understand what is happening with the animals. And through that, we're able to, to find peace, to make peace, and to bring God's kingdom, which is peace. Now we're going to talk about how that works with the seer as well within the mentoring sessions. It's, it's a bit more deeper than what we're going to cover today. And ultimately, it's so that you will know your tent is secure, for you will visit your abode and fear no loss. You will know that your descendants will be many and your offspring as the grass of the earth. You will come to the grave in full vigor, like the stacking of grain in its season. So basically what's happening here is this vision that we are working with all that God has given us, all the kingdom blessings, everything to bring into, to bring creation into the submission to the kingdom of God and his perfect and pleasing will so that we may come to the end of our life and meet Jesus Christ and be in perfection and find that life, find we are full of life, that we have it is like the stacking of grain in its season. It's just full of life. It's just full of stuff to give. And you know, when you before you stack the grain, the grain, the, the thing that it's growing on, has to die. And so it is with us. If we want to see the fruits 
of everything that we've poured into working in the kingdom of God, then we're going to see it after death. We're going to see it when we meet Jesus in the resurrection and he rewards us. And this, this reward, it brings everything that is good from this current age, brings it into the kingdom of God and it gets transformed into beautiful rewards. As Jesus said, he has gone ahead of us to prepare a beautiful place for us, a beautiful place in the Father's house. And there are many places available to us and he's preparing them. He's turning all the good stuff we are doing now for his kingdom into a reward that we may all share and enjoy for eternity. And this is the secret of the seer. It is to start perceiving the spiritual realms, to start understanding how God is reconfiguring the realms around us, the natural realm, the spiritual realm, into alignment with his kingdom, and then calling that into being with prophecy or declarations or intercessory prayer, and actually seeing peace come into land, seeing peace come into situations, seeing the supernatural miracles of God working in situations so that we may all enjoy the reward of that.